Ariel Pink, dedicated to Bobby Jameson. Review. It's a very good album. All right. So, the new album, dedicated to Bobby Jameson by Ariel Pink. Okay, so when this album first released, it was hype up to be Ariel's, like, big return to formula. You know, he was coming back. All those albums before today, pom-pom mature themes, those are nothing. This is the real good stuff. And to be fair, he mostly delivered song-wise. This is great. This is head and shoulders above before today mature themes, even pom-pom. And even though a couple of the songs are remakes, it's still great music. The stuff that I suspect to be new is incredible. And it sounds a lot like the stuff he made before, just much higher fidelity. And that's kind of where I was disappointed with this album, because it was hyped up to be this, like, big return from him. But really, we didn't get something as, like, it didn't capture the same spirit that House Arrest did. Stuff like House Arrest and Warren Copy had this do-it-yourself rock and roll spirit that really you just can't recapture in his newer stuff. So, I was kind of disappointed in that regard, but otherwise... It is a wonderful album. I really love the songs on this album. Everything on it is great. Even the songs that I didn't like are just kind of meh. Like, the song that I least like, Death Patrol, which I know is really going to piss a lot of you off when I say that, but I least liked it because just it's kind of bland and boring. But other than that, it's a wonderful song. And it really is a great album. I liked a lot of it. The keyboards, especially, retain a lot of that sound of his old stuff. Just the keyboards, like... And there were a few song remakes, but the album wasn't completely song remakes like before today. It was a couple remakes of really left-field stuff, like I Wanna Be Young and Time Dandelion. Whoever thought he'd remake those two tracks? One of the songs was only released on some obscure compilation he put out from uh, 2000 to 2003 that no one ever seems to have a copy of. I liked a lot of the tracks on it, like really liked them. Time to Meet Your God is great. I love the driving bass in it and the power in it. The title track dedicated to Bobby Jameson is a remake of one of my favorite Ariel Pink's Haunted Graffiti songs, Time Dandelion. I love that bass even though it's ripped from Light My Fire by the Doors. Um, Time to Live is probably the best single he could have put out and the best single he has really put out in a while. And Another Weekend, I love the guitar on it. It's really nice to hear another nice guitar-y song from Ariel. I Wanna Be Young is another wonderful remake. I mean, I like the, little, the original a little bit more in this case. But it's really good nonetheless. Bubblegum Dreams is just this wonderful, feel-good song that I would have expected from Ariel like 10 years ago. But just to hear it now is really nice, and it's really nostalgic to hear stuff like that again. Dream Date Narcissist is a, is a great example of sounding like his old stuff. Like, you really don't expect to hear a lot of stuff like that. Not only just how the whole spirit of the song, it sounds like something off Loverboy. <laughs> It's really just poking fun at love and life in general, and it's, I'm glad to see Ariel still has some of his sense of humor like that. Um, acting is another really good one. I love the keyboards in that, the bass in it's great. At first, it, it kind of wasn't an, an acquired taste, but after a while I really came to like it. You know, I Stockholm Syndrome myself into liking it nicely. And the bonus track, um, okay, if you didn't know this, on acting, there's a couple minutes of dead air, I know, don't take your CD out of the player for once, and you'll hear w one of his best songs from this era, in my opinion, Ode to the Goat. I love the bass driving on the chorus. <laughs> And overall, it's one of my favorite songs he's put out in a long while. I'm glad it got included on the CD release, because all I had was like some crazy off-pitch vinyl rip that wasn't even ripped properly. And the bonus tracks on this album only sweeten it. 
Uh, the first one we got was a digital-only bonus track that was later included on one of those crazy Japanese-only bonus track CDs. And it's really good. It's really funny, and I love just, it goes back to the spirit of old Ariel Pink tunes. Like I've said for a lot of this album, it has a lot of like crazy voice work from him, a lot of crazy vocals. It's really funny, and it's just a really good song. The next one was Nighttime is Great, which is a remake that I definitely wouldn't have expected. Like, if Time Dandelion being remade was like left field, this is like left, left, left of left field. Like, it's the song from like where you would put the worst players on the Little League team. And it's great. It's so funny. I love Don Bowles doing his wisecracking Dracula. Oh, did you lose weight, dear? No. I love the album as a whole, but these bonus tracks really sweeten it. Little Birdie Told Me was kind of meh. I mean, a lot of people said it sounds oh, it sounds like something straight from Fast Forward, and I really didn't feel the same because Fast Forward is one of my favorite albums by Ariel, if not my favorite. So I was almost insulted when people said this. That's why a lot of people were banned from my Discord server. But other than that, it's really good. It's not like one of my favorites, and it's kind of a throwaway song in the vein of some other fast-forward material, so I guess I could see the parallel, but it's a pretty good song nonetheless, and I'm glad Ariel included on this. And we've also got one of my favorites, Non Sequitur Segways. Ah, oh, it's great. And it just, it sounds like some 1999 circa Ariel Pink live recording. <laughs> Finally, it ends off with May the Music Never Die Again, and at first I was really disappointed because I was expecting a remake of May the Music Never Die, which is this beautiful ending track to fast forward, so I was expecting a remake to, to that, but instead what I got was this really funny, really quick, and in the end really catchy song about like, well to me it was about Ariel's return to form like this. And overall, this album left a very bright looking future for Ariel Pink's music. Not only did we have this beautiful album, but we have a very short, nice tour that seems to be really good. He's breaking out a lot of old classics that I really wouldn't have expected, like Tomb All Your Own, Ghosts, Elisa, Jagged Carnival Tours. I mean, I never even liked that song, but who the hell would expect him to play it, like, 16 years later? It's incredible. And on top of that, slowly coming out of the woodworks are a lot of, like, instrumental sketches that he's left of songs coming up, and they're really good. I mean, he had the most unexpected thing come out the other day, which is this instrumental remake of Trying to Tell You About Kincaid, one of my favorite songs by Ariel all time. God, how many times have I said that in this video? And he remade, he made like an instrumental remake of it, which I really wouldn't have expected, and I was just expecting a cover of a Michael Landon song, because that's what the song's called, and I was so pleasantly surprised, my head almost exploded. Overall, it's just leaving a really bright-looking future, and I'm really excited to see what Ariel comes out with next. See you later, guys.